I'm going to go back and do Christmas with my family because I realize it's more tragic until you've built your new family or whatever. It's actually more tragic to go out, you know, for the holidays with that. Just, just, you know, it's, it's really fucking sad out there. And then you see some people's tweets. They're like, I love New York city in the holidays. Cause everybody's gone. I have the city to myself. It's like, Oh God, <laughs> poor guy's putting a gun in his mouth. It's so nice. I get the whole city to myself. Everybody's gone with their families. And I'm just here enjoying an empty Auban Pan. Isn't this nice? Isn't it fun? No, it's not. You know, it really is. It really is a fucking tragedy, you know? But how long have we done? Hour three. Hour three. Few other things I want to discuss. We're not on the porch right now. We're go we're looking for Studio 2020. It's very cold in LA, and we can't really broadcast outside right now, really until the spring because it's freezing and the winds are high and the mics don't sound good. We we really were flirting today. What if we move the whole operation to Florida? Why not? What if we move the whole operation to sunny Florida? And I'm not talking about immediately, but eventually down the road. You know. The prices in New York and LA are they're a little they're they're a bit ridiculous. And when you look at, you know, the bang for your buck, yeah, Florida's got negatives, sure, you know, the bath salts, the eating of the faces. We get it. But I'm pretty sure that you could find places where that's not happening. And I just I don't know that when I was in Florida, I, I had a weird feeling. I was like, am I gonna end up in Florida? You know, my mother loved Florida, she was a fucking mermaid. A wiki watchy mermaid. I mean, that's where I come from. I come from a woman who swam around in a tank in Florida to entertain truckers because strip clubs weren't open. You know, they'd watch young women float around in a tank with fins on and then probably jerk off in their cars. That's where I come from. And I just wonder if that's where I'm going. There's something nice about Florida, 79 degrees. I mean, it's freezing in LA right now. There's something nice about it. And I'm looking at it's inexpensive. That, that I think there's no income tax or it's very low. You double fist all your fucking money down there. It just seems like maybe that's where I, where I, where I, where I end up eventually. I don't know. Way in people. Tell me if I'm crazy or is Florida the move. Build a studio in the house, travel, do live dates all around the country and just live in Florida. Maybe have a little apartment in New York, bounce around. You know, I'm not leaving L.A. anytime soon, but I'm just flirting with this idea. Florida. I don't know. It's where a lot of people go to give up. And that sounds nice. I won't be down there to give up. I'll still be funny. But, you know, it can be funny from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Do the show from anywhere. Get on the go on the road and entertain people from uh, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Do I need to be in L.A.? You know, LA's a canyon living doesn't appeal to me. I don't want to live in a canyon. I, you know, there's some beautiful homes in LA, but there are millions and millions and millions of dollars. The traffic is horrendous. Um, I love the comedy store. I love a lot of my friends here. I love a lot of the comics here. Um, that also, uh, you know, that also doesn't justify you spending seven times the amount of money on a home. That you have to evacuate like three to four times a year. Because there's a fire just surrounding your house, you know? Yeah, it's, it's burning. It's literally on fire. So I wonder, I wonder if down the road that's going to be a reality. And I mean, somewhere in the space of around 24 months and two years, I'm thinking if we build the show up enough, like, you know, do we stay, do I stay forever in LA? I mean, if the weather in LA was great all year round, that would be one thing. It's just really not. And the people that have spent time here kind of know that it's, it's, it's kind of cold. Every now and then it will rain. Um, I don't know. I just, I know Florida is a swamp climate. It's a little more tropical, but I don't know. As I, as I age, I'm like 34 and I'm like, where do I want to be 45? You know, do I want to be 45 in LA? Maybe if I really kid it out of the park and we start making crazy money. But, but even then it's like, I don't know. There's something nice about Florida. What's the big con of Florida? Just the hurricane season. That's it. The people. The people, <laughs> the people are the negative, the, the others, the people, 
you know? The pedophile parks and all that. That's no, that's, that's pretty isolated. I think that the real, I mean, the weather there, you've run into issues too, because hot and swampy, but you just look at, you know, you look at the amount of money you pay. I don't know. I just think this could, it could be the move. I got, I'm going to get a bunch of messages from people that are like, that love Florida, you know, yeah. there's just something nice about going out to dinner at three 30 PM. Something nice, mm-hmm. something nice about it. Going there into the backwoods. You'd, you'd, you'd have to go somewhere where you could build a nice big house or buy a house or, or an apartment. It would be inexpensive. I have no interest in spending a lot of money down there. So I'd want to go somewhere. I'd be somewhat isolated. I have to isolate myself. I have to isolate myself and I'd have to, you know, you know, I wouldn't want to be too isolated ever, but I, I would, I would, I, I could, I could probably go 20 minutes, 30 minutes out of a city and find something that's inexpensive and just much better to live. No traffic, light traffic, you know, get a studio there or build one in the house. Mm-hmm. You could go down there and golf. Mm-hmm. You yeah. could send your kids to Parkland. <laughs> I'm sure it's safe now. <laughs> but like, you know, that's the thought. That's what I'm kicking around in my head. On a day like today, when it's really cold, I kick that thought around in my head. I go, maybe, maybe down the road, a few years from now, I, I think about a little relocation. So I'm never going to do the winters in the Northeast again. I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing the New York City. It's just, I'm not doing it. I just won't ever do it again. And the winters in LA are not great. I'm not loving them. So I don't know. Maybe a nice sunny Floridian. Maybe that's how I end up. Like like Rush Limbaugh, just eating oxies, talking into a microphone, living in Florida. Is it the worst life? Just scratching my skin off, eating conch fritters. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'm crazy. But there's something nice about that state. There's something scary about it. There's a lot of things that are also very scary about it. But there's there's something when I was down there, I was in St. Pete Beach, and I went, you know, I don't know if the future of this, I don't know if the future of the way that I exist in this business is New York or LA. I don't need to be here. I don't need it. I do need it right now, but I might not need it in the future. And I certainly don't need to be in New York. I don't need to do 13 comedy shows a night till I drop dead. I just don't need to do it. God bless everyone that's doing that, but you're missing out on other things. (laughs) You can be a great comedian and not get up 75 times a night. You just can do it. You don't need to just fucking, there's other things you should experience in the world. Besides getting on stage in a dark room and telling everybody, you know, they they need to fucking listen to you and you need to laugh. I love it. It's great. But I'm like, hey, could I fucking, I could go on the road. I could, you know, it's, it's, you know, eventually that might be the, that might be the, and I mean, listen, there's other places, there's Georgia. There's a lot of other places. I have friends that are very happy outside of Atlanta, but there's something about Florida. Something about Florida that I like. I got to take you down there. I want you to really see see what it's about when's your next date down there i don't know i don't have one there's a comedy club in key west a really funny guy from boston named tom dustin runs i could talk to him about getting some but the, the keys are not really indicative of florida i mean the keys are like it's all that's a whole other thing but it would give you the idea of florida but i mean i, I could go down there and get a date i was just at side splitters which i loved you know but who knows i mean this is just you know it's just again we're just playing around here we don't know what's going to happen we might be in la i might stay in la forever you know, I don't know, but it also might just be like, w- w- when do you pull the switch? At what point do you pull the escape? I'm just sick. You know, I read these, I like the, the, the people, there's people that I started comedy with. God love them. That are still doing open mics in Brooklyn. They're still filing into a room and putting their name on a piece of paper and somebody's pulling it out of a bucket. And it's like, guys, I know I don't hate on anyone. God bless you. And, you know, I, I hope that you find the success you want or whatever. 
number one, I'm like succeeding and it's still not great. So there's that. I will tell you that it's, it's better than being in Brooklyn, pulling a, getting my name pulled out of a bucket, but it's, you know, it's still, you know, so the idea of like just your entire life, your entire life, I think just doing just your entire life, you go, yeah, I just did stand up and nothing else. I just didn't do anything else. I never, I just, you know, which is a, is great, but it's also like, are you missing out on literally everything else? You know, and then some of that hit me when I was sitting in that fucking restaurant and Thanksgiving last night. I'm like, what am I missing out? I'm missing out on a lot to do this. I'm, I'm missing out on a lot to be on the road constantly, to be just broadcasting all the time. To be doing, is there a way to do this that's less time intensive where I have more time to create a life that's more meaningful than just this business? Because you see the people where their entire life is this business. They're rotted. They rot from the inside. And you just see them and there's nothing behind their eyes. They just become vessels. And that everything's about, you know, just trying to make it. And they're still just trying to, and I get it. You want to keep building and you want more and the audiences have to be bigger. And I get all of that. I'm, it's very much in me to keep being that person. It's how I'm wired. But you think to yourself at a certain point, do you just want to get out of that and, and still be a comedian and still perform and still do the show, but not be running around LA or running around New York proving what, what are you proving at a certain point? At a certain point, it really is. That's the fucking question. That's the question. What am I proving? I know I'm funny. The people that enjoy what I do know I'm funny. Uh, who am I proving? Some fucking executive who doesn't know anything, you know, some executive who's basically kept their job by not, having any discerning to, and just sitting around and being a yes man and just sitting there and, you know, saying crazy, you know, stuff and just sitting there and being like, Oh yes. Well, we just want, you know, strong point of view. We're look, we just funny first. We want funny first. Oh, shut up. We're all being funny. You don't care. So what are we doing here? There's no movie coming. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But, you know, I'm settling into the idea that if this just gets, if we just get more people to enjoy what we're doing right now, then what the fuck is the point of living 20 minutes from the Paramount studio? Why? What are we doing? I'm not 20. I may sit in these rooms with these people. I'm like, you, you're, you're going to be fired in a few months. Oh, you know, I get it. It's like at a certain point you go, what am I doing the dance for? What do I, you know, you, you know, certain, certain, you got to at a, at a certain point, like I love the comedy store. I love the stand. They both work me. They're great. It's my New York home club. It's my LA home club. I go on the road. My agent's great. She puts me in all these places, but it's like, there's some clubs that just don't fuck with me in New York. And that's fine too. I don't care anymore. I'm not mad about it anymore. Like I used to, you know, you submit a veils when you're a comedian, you email a club and go book me. Some of them just don't book you. And for a while you're real mad at that. And you're like, I got to fucking get, I got to convince this fucking person that I'm fun. And then you go, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. That's fine. Good for them. You might not feel, you're not feeling me. That's okay. I'm not going to spend my entire life clawing and you know, it's unhealthy to spend your entire life never chasing a dream, but it's also un, very unhealthy to just keep chasing forever. Chase, chase, just keep, you know, listen, we all want to be better at what we're doing. We all want to get funnier and sharper. We want to build audiences, but a lot of the tools to do that now are in our possession. They're in our hands. And for me to run around and just convince gatekeepers that I'm good or just convince people, it just seems to be a fool's errand. And that's, you know, there's a lot of people that listen to this show that might be comedian. It's a fool's errand. You can just go to people right now and then just figure out a way to get them the content that they want, get them shit that makes them laugh. You know, if you, if you need, go get a potato and put a Marlboro light in his mouth and watch that and then press play 
on your phone. 